come to save the day. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. Hey, we're back, and today we're going to talk about a multimeter and what you can kind of use it for around the house. You may have one of these fancy things and not even know what to do with it. So stay tuned. We're going to show you how to use one of these. And <laughs> before we do that, make sure you click on the, uh, the, the subscribe button right there and also dingle on the bell. That way you'll get notified next time we post a new video. All right, so we've got uh, Sonar all wired up because he's the one that really knows how to use this stuff. I pretend to know how to use it, and Rich says he has no clue, although he's got the fanciest one out of all of us. I have two fancy ones. <laughs> yeah. I check batteries. <laughs> That's it. And then, but you've got another one too. And what's before we get started? Oh yeah. No, the Klein Tools sent us this pack, which has very similar multimeter. Yep. It has a outlet tester. Right. Which I have outlet testers. Yeah. But this has a digital readout. Yes. And then I have this electrical sensor that tells me stick your hand in or don't stick your hand in. <laughs> <laughs> if it and, makes noise, don't go near it. If it's quiet, you're probably okay. Yeah. And then what's the, was, what's the model number on that? We might as well give this is a plug kit. Over so your this kit, this is the electrical test kit, uh, 69355. Okay, excellent. And it's, it's awesome. It's everything, well, it's probably more than a typical homeowner would need. Sure. But, but it's, a, it's a good one. It's a good oh, one. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I tend to, I, I have the multimeter. I carry it in the truck. I go to it once in a while, but I tend to use this one the most right here. And I think, do you have a picture of that there, Sonar? It's, oh, yeah, yeah there you go. That up. So I use this one because it gives me my amps and it gives me my basic voltages. So that's really all I want to do. And then also I can test resistance and ohms with it. So in this one little device I, i've got what i need to be running around the house checking stuff um and then it also has volts ac and volts dc so okay it, it does so this is why we're doing this and people that watch this podcast often will realize that i do talk a lot <laughs> you will find that i'm going to be very quiet for this because i have no clue i set this to nine volt yes and I find that the battery in my moisture meter is good. Uh -huh. I set it to 1.5, and I find that the batteries in my remote are good. Okay. And then? Exactly. And then you and just then, put it away. <laughs> there was a whole bunch of numbers with letters and squiggly and dash lines. I'm done. All right. It's, now so, I'm listening. I'm a subscriber now. Okay, so why don't we do this, Sonar? Let's put, yeah. let's put the, the, the large, the, the full-blown multimeter... Yeah. Let's put this one up on the screen here. Okay. Since we're getting a lot of... Uh, and, w and we'll come back to the symbols that uh, that Rich is talking about. Yeah. So, can you want to... Either I can hold this up here, yeah. or let, can you go back to the other screen where you just have the picture of this? No, no. I'll, oh, okay. I'll, I'll go into the future, and I'll put a picture up right now. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, let's go over the first one here. And uh, the, the, the first one, we have the off button. But then if we turn it to the left, we get an A. And, and what's the A stand for there, Sonar? Amperage. Okay. And that's going to tell us what? How much... Wait. Can you zoom in? I don't have an A. You don't have an A? An A. Oh, look at that. I can zoom in. Hey. Right there. Oh, you, oh, you yours don't is have color anything color-coded, too. Yeah. It's fancy. Yeah, so that's the straight up A, that, and that'll give me my amperage. So A is also sometimes in the older ones are ohms over volts. Okay. That's good. And that'll tell you the amperage, like 15 amp, 20 amp, or 1.5 amps. You can test that kind of stuff to see what's, Absolutely. what's buzzing through. And then you have uh, MA. MA, which is milliamps. milliamps. And that tells us. The same thing, but just in a smaller increment. Thousands of an amp. Thousands of an amp. Okay, Absolutely. so now we're going to go to the backwards. So if you had 10 amps and you put it on that, it would show you 1,000 amps. Yes. It would show you one. Well. So if you had, 
it's now we're getting into math on the air, which I absolutely hate. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so it's so if you had one amp and you switched it to milliamps, right? It would show up as a thousand. Yes, exactly as you said, Rich. And then if we go to the backwards U and the A, and that is micro. So then that's going to give us that is a thousand milliamps. Right. So a That'd thousand a billion. thousand amps, which yeah. is a million. So that's testing very fine, fine mm -hmm. amounts of amperage. And if you are dealing in, even then, just safety reasons, if you are dealing in full-on amps, you should be clothed head to toe in safety equipment. Yeah. That's the reason why it goes down that low, because in most things, amperage is low and should be low. Because it's amperage that kills you, not voltage. Right. There yes, you go. That's that's, I've go. always known that. But the thing is, is to know how many amps you can take. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and then according to the Ohm's law, it's really how much resistance you are. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. I hardly resist anything. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, then there you go. Then you won't have as much amperage going through you. <laughs> So, okay, so neither one of these, I have a Craftsman here, mm -hmm. and I have the Klein, and they're nearly identical. Neither one has the amperage. Oh, really? Really? I would think they'd have at least one of them. Well, all I'm saying is, I don't know how to read the So you dial. should have a V, you should have an Omega symbol, I and got then Omega. you should have an, an A for amperage. Whether no. that's a UA and MA. The only time I have an amperage, I've got a what look, appears to be 10 amps. Do do you have an But it I? has the um, Morse code over it, which you already told me is DC. DC also <laughs> has DC also has amperage. Yes. Anytime you push let's let's go to our our Oh yeah, let's, let's go, go to our, our big picture let's go here. To our guys. Whoa, Whoa boo, boo. <laughs> <laughs> So, All right, so what's what's the guy in red? Okay, so he is our resistance. He is our ohm. He is essentially what's pushing back on everything. He's Res resisting the, the flow of the of the electrons exactly. through the wire. Exactly. And then volts is is doing what? Because he that looks pretty nasty. Whatever. So volts is is it is the um, you can't say power because power is a word. Yes. <laughs> in electricity, yes. it's the force that pushes. through through the resistance. Right. And Amperage that... is what is caused when you push them through the resistance, is, is how I understand it. So the, the best way to look at it is um, resistance is your carpet. Okay. Voltage is your dog scooting across the carpet. Cleaning his butt. And amperage is <laughs> when you the touch friction <laughs> that is happening while that is going on. <laughs> okay, so, and, and this might be a little even beyond, you know, no offense, but so then if I have 12 gauge wire yep. stranded and they tell me it's good for 20 amps, then I have 14 gauge wire, they tell me it's good for 15 amps. Correct. So you're just telling me. It's not so much the amperage, it's because I'm still pushing 120 volts. Yeah. So if you look at it, it's it, back to that that carpet analogy. Your your um your I guess your uh My carpet your was current, thicker. Yeah. Yeah. Your current is how much heat is being is happening in that in that wire, which is why it's rated to amperage. Because I this can guy. put yeah, exactly. So I can push a whole bunch of voltage through that wire. If I have a resistant on the other side, which includes that wire, that then would exceed that amperage, that wire now becomes hot. Right, and that's why things start to glow. Exactly. That's how an electrical heater works. Now, if I just take a wire and throw it onto the, um, the voltage without any kind of resistance behind it, that's where you're not necessarily worried too much about the amperage in the wire because it's not traveling. If you notice, current in this one has to flow. 
So even in a DC, this is a DC circuit, current has to go from negative to positive. If you don't connect that negative side, there is no flow, there is no amperage, it's only just um, infinite resistance. And that's when you put in your meter and it tells you OL. That's overload of your resistance. You can't measure that resistance because it's infinite. Yep. So, Got it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can sit there and agree all you want. Me and the rest of the listeners are like, what? But, but that's essentially it. It's, it's, it, it you lost it me like when water. you scooted the dog across the curb. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Well, even then, look, okay, then let's use, let's use a plumbing analogy. <laughs> okay. Let's use a plumbing analogy. Yep. Voltage is how much force of water is being pushed through. The resistor or resistance is how thin your pipe is. And the amperage is that water flow just through that little pipe. So we all know with the more pressure that you put behind it with a smaller hose, it goes out faster out of that, that smaller side because there's more force behind it. It's the same thing with amperage. The higher you push up the, the, the voltage, the more force that you have essentially is your current or the more you tighten your resistance or shrink your hole, the more force that you have to have to match that same voltage. Just like putting your thumb over the garden hose. Yep. That, that's it. It's, it's, it's the same principle. So. And your current is how far you can go before the kids are out of reach. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so let's go back. Bye. Let's, let me get, I'm just going to disconnect these wires here because that makes it more easy. So now, let's, we're going to go back to our off side, mm -hmm. which we're right there. So then our next one is just a V. And our V is? Voltage. And that's just, that could be 120 volts in a house. That, that's also going to give you your battery, all your battery ones. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to test a nine volt battery, you should be coming up with more than nine volts. Nine. Yeah. Okay, so my voltage ones, say 600V and 200V. So if I'm checking batteries, do I set it at 600 or 200 or does it matter? You would set it to your lowest setting. Essentially what you're trying to do is measure something within a window. So if you turn around and say, my highest peak is 600 volts, um, but I'm only measuring a volt and a half, you've got too much meter. You turn yeah. down and you come down. Well, that makes sense that to me because that's kind of what I do. But mm -hmm. I mean, I got a 200 amp service on my house. I should have 125 volts. So I really don't need to go to 600 volts. That would be a pretty big commercial Yep. And Service. essentially what's happening in that you're actually changing um, pathways for your fuses. And that's why you always start at the highest, measure with the highest, and then work your way down from there right. to, to zero in. So now Rich has a dial that he can change that voltage mm -hmm. to change that range. And I don't think you can see that. Well, maybe you can. You have a button. I have a range button. So then I can, let's see if it shows it yeah i don't know if you can see that moving uh, it, it moves the decimal point yeah i see it on the left there yeah so it just i like it, the fact that you're actually getting numbers and you have no probes well it's just uh, that's because i'm holding it mm -hmm. yeah i know i'm messing with you that's his electric personality yeah oh. <laughs> sparky uh let's go uh next up now the next one on mine is the horseshoe and I don't know if you can see that there. Which is upside down, which is not good because that's how all the luck runs out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you can see I am on overload right now. Yep. I am OL. That is your resistance. So you have overloaded. How could you be overloaded? You don't have anything plugged in. That Well, what it is is it reaches the top. So the top of this resistance is infinite. So when he puts it together, as if two wires are coming in, then he should be close to zero, and it's just the wires resistance that is there. You can see over here, I'm holding these two together, creating that, 
that see now I took it apart and it's overload. Yep. Push it back together, it goes back to zero or one. And now again, I can set the range on this one. So I'm gonna tab through the range starting at the highest and work my way down to find out what the true resistance is of whatever I'm trying to do. Exactly. Gotcha. And, and in this case, when I'm when I do this, like if I have a light bulb, someone someone sent us a, a note wanting to know how to test a light bulb. Here you go. So now I'm gonna put that there, and then I'm gonna hold one side to the bottom of the light bulb. And then the other one, I'll touch the side where it screws in. And you can see we've got resistance there. Mm -hmm. It's 15 point, it's bump, bumping around, 15, 16. Which so, means there is a connection through the entire thing. Right. And that also means that there is a resistance. So if I was to push voltage into that light bulb, it would activate. Correct. Now, if, if for some reason I had one that, a, bat, a, a light bulb that I was touching and I get, got this OL, that, that's telling you the, the light bulb's no good. Yep. That means the filaments in it is broken. There's, there's no connection between the entire two. Correct. See, there, it's talking to me now. Yep. It's okay. telling you overload. Yeah. So now, do you, do you have that, Rich? Clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, hold on. Let's go back to our. <laughs> let's go back to our picture. Let's go back to our picture. So, Rich, you have. Pay attention now. You, you, yeah. Pay attention. <laughs> Mine just kept yeah. showing 14.06 and I have nothing. I don't know. Okay. So, so, you've got your power source right here at the, at the top your plus and your minus, your power source. That is a symbol yeah. for a battery. But so, I thought direct current didn't need to meet. I thought it, that was... it does. It has to. F it has to make an entire flow. So it get, the electrons flow out of the negative side, pass through whatever load that you have, and then back into the positive. So like a DC motor, it's passing through the windings or through that magnetic field. Then it has to go back the other way. Exactly. That's to... why you have a plus and a minus on your battery to complete you... the circuit. Exactly. You turn it the wrong way, and it no longer is that same flow as it comes through. So that battery is our power. The resistor is our light bulb. It's a resistance. It's a load. It's something to activate when we push voltage through it. So essentially, if your, if your light bulb, your load, doesn't make a complete connection from the in to the out, then it is no good. From, from this, whoops, sorry, Rich. I didn't mean to poke you in the eye. From this You're side fine. to this side, if there's not a connection through there, mm -hmm. then you're going to get the OL. There is no resistance to it. Exactly. But then why well, would it say OL over? So there, no, there <laughs> is resistance. There is. Why wouldn't it be zero? Infinite. There is infinite resistance. There you go. That is, is what it is. There's infinite resistance. There's so much resistance that you can't push it through. So you can't push anything across because it's so far away or it's broken or right. anything else. So, it's the same thing with a light switch. When I switch it off, I'm breaking that connection. Right. So if your light bulb is dead, then it would not have any connection. There, let's go back to our overhead. Let's go back to our overhead. Okay, there you can see it's on overload because I, I have these two probes disconnected. But as soon as I put them together, there you can see they're starting to show my resistance. Just a little bit of resistance. But there is a connection there. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you, it goes apart. And now I can hold those really close together and it's still overloaded because it's not making a contact. But as soon as I touch those together, there you go. Yep. Now I'm getting some resistance. So what happens- And you have your set on what? On like the, the two Killy horseshoes <laughs> or the 20 M horseshoes. I've got it at the there. Now I just changed my range. Let's see what it got now. See it. Now it's just going to read zero because I, I took the range too high. I had it down in, All right. in the thousand. So I go to the bottom there. Two Killy horseshoes. Yep. <laughs> and then that's your max. What you're doing is you're setting the max of your meter. The, that's the maximum that. resistance it's exactly. going to provide. That it will read. So if it's right. over that, it'll either say overload or maybe it'll just cap at 2K, 
whatever it is. That's why you always want to start with your highest and walk down um, so you're kind of targeting in. Yeah, on your range. There. So now mine's at the highest. Mm -hmm. I see it just, it just walks down to zero. But it's, it's showing there's a connection. Mm -hmm. Even though I've, I've, I'm putting these here, it shows zero because it's, such, it's a good connection. Mm -hmm. And there is not much resistance. Whereas with the light bulb, we go back to our light bulb and we show our resistance there. Now we're starting to get some numbers if it was working. Try that again. So you may be too low. I might, oh yeah, my range might be too low. So now let's go. Overloading your range. Or you broke the bulb. Yeah, oh no, we, there, there we go. Now I got it, I, yeah. I changed the so range. Mine doesn't show overload, mine's actually showing one. Oh, okay. So but it just goes there's a one. space, then a dot, so it's not showing, you know, 10 point, whatever, or mm -hmm. one point. But if I touch my probes together, it does go to zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's nothing in between. It's essentially just the resistance of the wires themselves. Well, what about my brain? Your brain? Well, there you go. You've got some resistance in you. <laughs> nope. Still showing nothing. Yep. <laughs> now, if you were if you were uh, if you were really wet, you got, just came in out of the rain, you could you could possibly have a connection. Or if your hands were wet, you mm -hmm. had wet gloves on, and you were trying to do this, you you can get some. Uh, resistance through through some wet gloves or something like that so you really want to be careful when you'd use that so ron you were um you were pulling some of those things out and moving plugs um all right so were... i'm holding the two probes in my fingers uh-huh yeah but and i'm showing three ohms resistance <laughs> that's your resistance <laughs> so from one finger through your body path of least resistance yep. to the other fingers that's how much um uh, I guess ohms that you have. Hmm. Let's see if I can do that. Nope. I wouldn't suggest doing this if you had a pacemaker, I guess. Oh, yeah, that well, wouldn't matter. No. Um, what's really there. great about um, about resistance is you can measure resistance in almost anything. Yep. See there. Now I'm, um, I've got it dialed down low enough that, mm -hmm. that I'm picking it up now. Picking yourself up. Yep. So that's where. So range would these comes be important. good things to go? When you got to go ask the wife a question, see if there's any <laughs> resistance. <laughs> Possibly. Honey, I want a new motorcycle. Five. I'm pretty sure she's at 9 0. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah, this is the whole electrical thing. I mean, like, I could wire a house. Uh-huh. Don't understand how this stuff works, though. It does blow my mind. You just know how to put it together. Yes, but it is funny because they say there's no such thing as electricity. It's still theoretical. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't see it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so now I go to my next setting, and I've never used this one. It's a flat T up against a T that's curved. Um, that's probably uh, capacitance. Oh, okay. I mean, that, me that's see. electronics, but crap, I think, right? Yeah, I think that's probably capacitance. Let me see. Come take a look, see. Take a look. Yeah, that's a capacitor. Okay, so I know I don't play with those. Yep, that's when we were talking about farads. Uh, okay, that's, so that's what they're measured in. That in electronics world, that's where you would mm -hmm. you could check that. Yeah, you as a home capacitor. electrician, you should. If you're getting to the point where you're measuring components, you should be taking it back to the store. <laughs> yeah. Which, so, and a capacitor does what? A capacitor holds voltage to release at a different time when there's no more power to it or however it goes. Right. So, um, that's why when you unplug, let's, let's say you un unplug the cable box and the light stays on for a mm -hmm. while, that's what it's doing. You have to get rid of some exactly. of Exactly. It's dissipating the, um, the voltage out of that specific thing. That's also... Um, uh, for tubes. So if you're working on a old tube TV, they will actually hold a voltage in the tube as well. So you've got to dissipate that before you do any electronic work right. with it. And that's, but that's what I mean. If you're getting to the point where you're, you're, right. you're troubleshooting like components, right. yeah, you should just take it back to the store. Right. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So the next one on mine is Hertz. Okay. 
So I don't know. Do you have hurts on any of yours, Rich? No love setting. No love Probably setting? Probably not. Yeah, because love hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and this gives me a percentage. So, uh, so wait, what's the symbol for hurts? It's an H, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. H-Z. H-Z. No. Yours is better than even the one I got from Klein. Oh, yeah? Most of them yeah, don't got... have a frequency meter on them. Most of the time they, I mean, even then, I'm surprised you have a, a capacitance on there. Right. Um, well, like the Craftsman doesn't have either of those. Okay. But it does have one that I can set to Fahrenheit and one to Celsius. Okay. Oh. But it isn't telling me the and, temperature. Right. And that's what I've got those probes here. It's a different probe you have to plug in to do that. And I've got those on mine also. Hmm. Oh. Um, so, but Hertz is good if you're uh, transformers. You're, you, you know, like you, if you go to a service and you're testing the service, you want to make sure you've got 60 hertz, mm -hmm. which yeah, is what we hear. Everything in the, in the United States is 60 hertz. Yes. But I have found where they're off. So um, well, I didn't realize that the most, a lot of these testers actually show that. Yeah. So that's what that's for. You, and that's the cycles per second, correct? Yes. So now what that is is. So whether, wait, does that work on AC and DC? DC is going to be constant. Because AC. It, back and forth, right? Correct. And it's doing it 60 times a second. Correct. So that's your 60 hertz? Correct. Yeah, so what's happening in in that signal is it is, let's say it's a 5 volt 60 whatever or 120 or however you want to put it. Right. Essentially what it's going is it's going up to positive first, hitting your plus 5, your plus 120, whatever you're going at. Then on the other end of the cycle, it's going down to that negative voltage at that exact time and so what's happening is it's powering it on and off that many times so your lights in your house especially if they're the incandescent uh guys the uh -huh. the, the filament bulbs yep um they are actually turning on 120 times a second right on and off you so Half of your second, you're actually in the dark, <laughs> right. and you don't realize you, you can't are. see it, right? But then, now you go to go to Europe, and they're 50, uh, 50 cycles exactly. per second. So now it's a hundred times that your light is turning on and off in the in that second. And then now that's why some components you buy here don't work there, or if you buy something over there, it won't work here. It's because those so, cycles per second are off. Mm -hmm. So would that equate to some of, let's say, the LED light bulbs that we get, the, the fancy ones, let's say Hensho de China. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, sometimes they flicker. Yes. So to, so to are, activate Are they that, probably mismatched for our hertz? Well, what's happening yeah. is they they use, it's usually the dimmer ones that, that do that, the ones that are adjustable dimmer. And what's happening, instead of actually dimming the intensity, they are giving you less cycles per second. So that's why when you like try to videotape something or um, point, your, point your phone at your TV and it used to just have that cycle rate that's happening, what's happening is your eyes are recognizing that lower cycle. And the dimmer is just giving you less cycles instead of actually dimming the voltage. Right. It depends on the type of the dimmer. Yeah. It, it and, and and then the, also the the light bulb itself. Some of them don't like less voltage mm -hmm. because they'll stay on. Ex well, yeah. LEDs or, or they'll work with little yeah. a little voltage. LEDs are like well, no, the ones other... I was thinking of. They're on a regular light switch. They're not even on dimmers, and they just you know just flicker. Yes. Yeah. So like LEDs, some of them have to have that that voltage, otherwise they won't turn on. If they don't have a specific amount of voltage, they won't even turn on. Right. So what they're doing is instead of lowering that voltage, they are lowering the cycle, and then our eyes are perceiving it as dimmer. So the other thing that happens, too, is if the further away you are from the transformer, your house, if you're the third one in the, in the row, you may only have 105 volts. You may not have 125 on a, on a leg. So that will start playing with, with, uh, with a lot of equipment in the house too. I've also seen where it's been 140, 150. So, cause those people are right next to the transformer. 
So those kinds of things can happen. And it, you know, that's why you pull one of these babies out, and that's what you go and figure out what's going on. Uh, but you know, you just gotta you just gotta watch and and and, uh, and figure out what it is. And like I said, most of the time I'm just using this one because I grab this one first. It gives me my amperage. It does everything. And this, you just you just clip it around the wire, and it'll tell you how much amperage is going through that wire right away. Be so you can test loads really fast. Because if you use the if you use the one that you have with the two leads. You actually have to put your meter in the circuit to test the actual amperage with those. Right, which is scary. <laughs> yes. It, yes. One hundred percent. Yeah. Exactly. So. Because I'm protected by the two plastic pieces that were supplied by the lowest bidder. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, and then this one here, Klein okay. Tools, has a very simple voltage tester. Aren't we going up there? See this one, you got voltage AC DC on there, and then you also have the continuity, which is doing your ohms, and you can just touch that together mm -hmm. and it gives you a tone. Yep. So you don't even have to look down to see, you just hear it. Is that do the light bulb with that? Oh yeah. <laughs> and then this one here, it actually has a light on it so that you can Ooh. You can so I used to it. use my Wiggy all the time, but my Wiggy was pretty much, it just told me if I had 110, 125, or if I was, you know, right, working. So you see that all the time. I mean, I bet my Wiggy's older than most of the people that watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you just want basic voltage and, and, uh, and, and, and continuity, and then also just to be able to have the, the tester just to make sure the circuit's hot. These are great for that. It's a quick yeah. little, it's a quick tool to grab for just the basic information. And those are built more for the, the, the home electrician because you don't need to go in and make sure that my Zener diode is pointed the right direction <laughs> and all this other craziness that you need. Yeah. So, well, I just got done checking the flam shooter doing my own plumbing. Exactly, so, I mean, yeah. I'm pretty sure I can go check all that stuff out with the electric now. Ex exactly. So, that, so that's it. It's, it's, Choose it's the same thing. You guys have six or seven different types of hammers. Yep. Why would you have <laughs> more than that? Why, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And they're all made for different things, but at the end of the day, they're all heavy things to pound stuff in. Right. So this is the same thing. Is at the end of the day, this is to test something that you can't see with your eyes, but you can definitely see or feel with your fingers. Oh yeah. So mm -hmm. the. Uh, the multimeter, mm -hmm. excellent tool for that. It gives you all that information. If you don't need this much information and you just want the basic stuff, then you've got these other two options. Klein Tools make all of these. Um, I, I happen to have these uh, X-Tech ones, but uh, Rich has the good set. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right I got there. the lovely set. Yeah, he's got the good <laughs> set right there that does the same thing. So, yes. uh, again, the, the Klein Tool number on that one is... The 69355 kit. Okay, I'll get that posted below in case somebody wants to pick one up. Let me and, uh, while you're closing out, let me see if I can get a retail. Okay, so these are great tools to have if you want to do electricity. If Grandpa has one of these, <laughs> <laughs> this will work too. <laughs> it does the same thing. It's just, what's this called? Analog? That's, that's our analog there. <laughs> it doesn't have those cool LCD uh, screens. 50 bucks. Yeah. 50 bucks for that pack? That's amazing. 50 bucks you can't yeah, beat it. Cause no. I think I paid 20 bucks at least or 10 bucks for one of my outlet checkers. Right. Mm -hmm. But this one has signal. a digital display which tells me a lot more information and then yes, this is the one that says you can go in the water or you can't go in the water. Right. Signal guy. Yeah. And Excellent. then the multimeter which I don't know. Let's go. Does it does it's it do lost, does it do we'll voltage? It Wait, so go does over it, this real quick, Rich. Does it does it do voltage? The multimeter that you got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does no, voltage. it's got volts. Does it do resistance? DC. It has resistance. Okay. Does battery checking. There you go. But it doesn't have hertz. That's okay. But yep. I bet if I hit myself with it, it would hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Anyway, no, yeah. I mean it's. I've had a couple of these over the years, and literally. Probably like a lot of people, I didn't buy it. I inherited it, whatever. Uh huh. And what do you do? You go. 
check batteries. All right. <laughs> yep, 1.5, battery's good. Yep, exactly. So, all right, there you go. Hopefully that helped you out. If you've got any questions, post them below. Rich will be happy to answer them for you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah especially on this topic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time keep it square and level there you go all right oh and uh, click on that subscribe button dingle on the bell while you're at it oh yeah do all of that and then go visit klein tools website because they've got a lot of fun stuff there tons of stuff that was all over the place i hope we answered some yeah. of your questions rich <laughs> <laughs> did, did we help you at all rich not really. <laughs>